All right, we're going to solve two problems in this video. The first one, we have a transformation described to us geometrically, and we have to find the standard matrix for that transformation. And then as a bonus in this problem, we're going to see is that transformation one to one. And then the second problem we're going to solve in this video has a transformation described to us in a different way. The transformation gives us two transformations, S and U. The transformation is described so that we know the components of the output vector in terms of the components of the input vector. And we want to find the standard matrix for both of these transformations, S and U, and then find the standard matrix for S composed of U, um, which really just boils down to multiplying the standard matrices together, but we'll get there. So first off, we have this transformation in the first problem. We're calling it T, and it takes input vectors in R2, transforms them into input output vectors also in R2, and what it does is it reflects your input vectors over the line y equals 0, the x-axis, and then it rotates them 45 degrees counterclockwise, and whatever you get, that's your output. And so in order to find the standard matrix for any transformation, the process is the same. You take what's called the identity matrix, which is just a matrix. It's a square matrix with ones along the diagonal, the main diagonal, and zeros everywhere else. You take the columns of the identity matrix, you plug them into the transformation, wherever they end up, wherever, whatever output you get by inputting the columns of the identity matrix, those output vectors form the columns of the standard matrix. And this always works, so don't ask me how it works, like, it's pretty spooky magic to me, but you can go to your professor's office hours and you can hash it out, and you can learn from him or her. So, so in this case, it looks like we're taking input vectors in R2, so that means we're going to want to use the columns of the 2 by 2 identity matrix. Um, so the standard matrix for T, let's call it A, this standard matrix is composed of the first column of it will be whatever output vector we get by using E1 as the input vector, where E1 is just the first column of the identity matrix. Remember, we're using the 2 by 2 identity matrix because we need the input vectors in R2, right? So the first column of the standard matrix is wherever E1 lands by applying the transformation to it. The second column will be wherever the vector E2 lands, wherever the vector 0, 1 lands when we apply the transformation to it. And this is the definition. This works for any transformation, okay? So now we just have to find that, and we're going to do this geometrically. We're going we're gonna to apply some of the principles we learned in our geometry class back in high school. So let's see, what is the transformation, what's the output that we get when we input E1, the vector 1, 0. So let's see. Let's think about it geometrically. Oops. We have our xy plane, and the vector 1, 0, our input vector, looks like this. And what do we do to it in this transformation? Well, it says that we um, reflect over the x-axis, the line y equals 0, and then we ro rotate 45 degrees counterclockwise. So let me ask you, if we reflect this vector over the x-axis, what happens to it? Nothing, right? Because it's already lying on the x-axis. So it doesn't change from reflecting over the x-axis. But then the next step is we rotate it counterclockwise 45 degrees. That's just how this transformation is defined. So we take it, we reflect it over the x-axis. That doesn't change it. And then we rotate it 45 degrees counterclockwise. And we get this. So now we just have to find what are the components of this vector, because this vector Will, will be the first column of our standard matrix. So let's see, let's do some geometry. Um, if we look at this and break it into a right triangle, we have it's this degree here, this angle is 45 degrees because that's how much we rotated it by. And uh, what's the length of the vector? Well, the length of our input vector is one, right? It's the vector one, zero, and it's rotated. It's not scaled. So the length of the vector doesn't change through this transformation. So this hypotenuse here, is 1. We want to find the legs of this right triangle because that will give us the x component and y component of our output vector, which is the first column of our standard matrix. So let's see, this is just um, this is just trigonometry, right? You guys know how to do this. So the x component of this vector, if we know the angle and the hypotenuse, we have the x component is root 2 over 2, and the y component is also root 2 over 2. So then we know what t of e1 is. t of e1 
is the vector root 2 over 2. It's this vector. It's the transformed E1 vector. So A is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. That's our first column. Now our second column of A is going to be whatever happens to, is going to be the output vector when we input E2. So now we got to do this process again. So we have our xy plane and we input E2. Right, E2 is the second column of the 2 by 2 identity matrix. And so it's just the vector 0, 1. And now we apply the transformation to it. So first step is it's re reflected over the x-axis. So that would go down to here to the vector 0, negative 1. And then it's rotated 45 degrees counterclockwise. So then it goes so then it goes to here. And now here's our output vector right here. And we've got to find the components of it. So we can use this triangle geometry approach again. So here's the vector. It still has length 1. It was never scaled through the process of the transformation. We've got to find the legs of this right triangle because that'll be our x and y component of this vector. So again, this is 45 degrees. So it was rotated 45 degrees. So you could say that this angle is 45 degrees and equivalently its complement, this angle, is 45 degrees. And we know the hypotenuse. So we can find the x component is going to be root 2 over 2. And its y component is going to be negative root 2 over 2. So don't make that mistake. So now this vector is pointing bottom to the bottom right, and so its y component is negative. So the, the length of this side is root 2 over 2, but the component, the y component of this vector is negative root 2 over 2. So we've just found that t of um, 0, 1, when we plug in e2, second column of the identity matrix, into the transformation, our output vector is root 2 over 2, right? The x component of this vector is root 2 over 2, and the y component is negative root 2 over 2. And by definition of how you find standard matrices, the transformed vector, the transfer, the, the vector we get as an output when we input 0, 1, this vector here, is the second column of the standard matrix. So we have root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And if you'd like, you can factor out root 2 over 2 and say a equals root 2 over 2 times 1, 1, 1, negative 1. All right, so that's our standard matrix. You could write it in here, but my pen is white, so it wouldn't show up. Okay, the, the second part of this question, really quick, is the transformation 1 to 1? Well, if you remember from the last video, that just is a matter of looking at, is there a pivot in every column? Sorry, oh, see, I messed up. If the transformation is 1 to 1, then it has a pivot in every row, not every column. And in this case, it will, right? If we, if we row reduce this, we could do the second row equals the second row minus the first row, and we'll get a pivot here, and we'll get a pivot here. So you could try the row reduction if you want to, or you could think about it geometrically. You can get every vector in the output space by doing the transformation of some appropriate input vector. And so either way you think about it, yes, this transformation is one to one. Okay, let's move on to this next problem. So like I said, we have these two transformations, S and U, and it tells us what our output vector's components are in terms of our input vector's components. So here it's like written as like a list, uh, like comma separated values. You can just think of these as vectors, like this has three components, this has three components. Oh, it looks like this one only has two components because there's just one comma. Okay, anyway, you want to find the standard matrix for S and you want to find the standard matrix for U. And then the standard matrix for S composed of U will be those two matrices multiplied together. And we'll talk about why that is in a little bit. But first, we've got to find the standard matrix for this transformation called S. So I'm just going to call the standard matrix S. Technically, you should probably use a different letter for the standard matrix of a transformation than what the transformation is actually called. But I don't know. I'm not a math major. I don't really care. So to avoid confusion, we're going to say the standard matrix of the transformation S is called S. And it's going to be, its columns are T of E1, T of E2 and T of E3. So now it's a little different. Now we have three columns. And the reason for that is because the input space of S is R3. So we need the input vectors in R3. Um, and so we need to use the columns of the 3x3 three three identity matrix, not the 2x2 two two identity matrix. So this is, by definition, our standard matrix for S. So let's see what happens. What is T of E1. So now E1 is going to be 1, 0, 0. Well, let's see. 
So we have, we're inputting one, zero, zero. So x1 equals one, x2 equals zero, x3 equals zero. So our output is gonna be one minus zero plus two times zero. So the first component of our output is one. And then our second component is x3. And if we're inputting one, zero, zero, x3 is zero. So we do that for t of e1. And we can find t of e2 and t of e3 in the same way. So now we're inputting for t of e2, we're inputting 0, 1, 0. And what does that get us? Well, now we have x1 and x3 are 0, but x2 equals 1. So our output vector is 0 minus 1 plus 0, 2 times 0. So we get minus 1 as our first component. And then we get x3, which is 0 for our second component. So I'm going to finish this off, and then I'll be right back. OK, so I found t of e1, t of e2, t of e3. There are these three vectors, so I can just plug that in. So our standard matrix for the transformation S is 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 2, 1. OK, I'm going to do the same exact process for our transformation U, and I'm going to find the standard matrix for U. So I'll be back in just a second. OK, really quick, our transformation U takes input vectors in R2, so we need to use um, the columns of the 2 by 2 identity matrix in this case. OK, I'll check in with you in one more second. Okay, so by going through the same exact process as always, I found um, the standard matrix U um, for the transformation U. And we also have our standard matrix S for the transformation S. So now we want to find S composed of U. The transformation S composed of U, what is its standard matrix? So I'm just going to call its standard matrix A, okay? Um, what does it mean, S composed of U? So back in calculus, you guys would have like a function f of x and a function g of x and then you would say what is f composed of g it would be something like f of g of x so see how f is composed of g so it's this it's a similar thing so we have our standard matrix u which means the transformation u is defined to be u times an input vector x and now we want to do s composed of u so we want to do the transformation of s to whatever we get as our output to u of u so we do s times u times x so this is our transformation u and then we want to do s to whatever we get as an output of that and so this s times u you could rewrite this as s u x these two matrices and this is just another matrix and so i could call that a and a would be our standard matrix of s composed of u so a is equal to s times u. So now we just do matrix multiplication. So A equals s times u. So we have 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1 times our matrix u, which is 1, 3, 1, 1, negative 1, 0. So let's, first let's make sure this matrix multiplication is defined. We have a 2 by 3 matrix times a 3 by 2 matrix. Perfect. And um, so that means the inner dimension, so since the inner dimensions of these, the 3 and the 3 are the same, that means the matrix multiplication will be defined. Then the outer dimensions, this 2 and this 2, gives the dimension of the product matrix. So we're going to have as an output, or as a product, we're going to have a 2 by 2 matrix. And I'm just going to do this matrix multiplication for you. I have it written down. You get 0, 2, 1, 0. There you go. That, this matrix, 0, 2, 1, 0, is the standard matrix of S composed of U. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. The main idea in this video is that if you want to find the standard matrix of any transformation, you take the columns of the identity matrix, plug it into this into the transformation, whatever you get as an output, those make up the columns of the standard matrix. And it's like this every single time. It works every single time. So hopefully this helps, and I will see you in the last video of this transformation mini-series talking about how to determine when a transformation is linear.